Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is Psycho Gold, this is Psycho Gold Videos. Sorry that Goblin Slayer is late this weekend, but I have been trying to get a lot of stuff prepared for next weekend because I'm going to Comic Con. But enough about that, you all came here for the Goblin Slayer. So, last time on Goblin Slayer we had a fantastic episode where we got a little bit of backstory about why he is the way he is, how his mind works, and uh that some very not nice things happened to his family when he was a child. And he watched it all happen and couldn't do anything, and that's pretty much why he's the way he is. Now, last week's episode ended with uh, an elf woman, and she seemed to have a party with her, basically trying to track down the Goblin Slayer. She heard a tale from a bard. We don't know if it's 100% accurate or whether it's just a bard's right to embellish a story, as any good bard should. Uh, but... I'm guessing that in this episode they're going to meet him, or we're going to see a little bit more from them. Either way, I don't know, but what I do know is, is that this episode starts by letting everybody know that this show contains scenes that some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, if you don't know that by now, then I, I, yeah, you, you, you should know that by now. Like, putting these warnings up is all well and good, but the only episode so far that's needed it was the first one. <laughs> and it didn't have that. Because it was totally PG material, right guys? Guys? They didn't They didn't agree with me. Anyway, episode 3, let's get into it. 3, 2, 1, go! Oh, this is pretty. When there were fewer stars shining in the sky. Well, that would have to be a, a long time ago, my friend. I know that this is based on Dungeons and Dragons, but... Was that like a fourth wall break, or are we actually saying that these, uh, that this world is a Dungeons and Dragons game? And like, these people kind of half know it, because that's why no one's got any names. I mean, I know the dice was in the opening as a sort of tribute, and I know the author likes Dungeons and Dragons, and I know that this is based on, oh, this is essentially a custom D&D campaign, but... That was a little bit too much of a fourth wall break to be a coincidence. If it wasn't obvious from the last time that they were gonna all end up as a party, this opening definitely gave it away. Unexpected visitors. <laughs> oh, she's a high elf. Okay. Ah, cause she has longer ears, okay. For a dwarf, he's not that much shorter than she is. Oh! <laughs> well, there goes that burn. Oh, hello. He looks cool. Why does he look like he's half dragon, half Native American? <laughs> I was gonna say. It's nice to see a lizard man, though. Well, that was well timed, wasn't it? I like the lizard man's design, even though he looks very Native American. If it involves slaying goblins, I'm in. Okay, so the witch is here. <laughs> the very, the very interesting placement there of the camera both times. Oh no, make that every time. <laughs> Flipping heck! I know that. I know that anime likes to give uh, certain characters very revealing clothing, but if she uh, just walks in a funny way, she might as well not bother with the clothing. <laughs> okay, well I'm glad she's just as distracted as all of us would be in real life. <laughs> Wonder if we'll get to see her use any actual magic out in a, on a mission as opposed to just chilling in the guild bar. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't see what the issue is. If he's gonna, if he's off dealing with the other guys, helping them slay some goblins, she goes off with them deals with some other monsters, and then comes back and can continue her goblin slaying ways. I suspect there's going to be figures of her before uh, this series is through. <laughs> I, can, I can already see DB Geek's reaction to that sequence. I bet there's a space for her on his shelf next to Albedo, already dusted. <laughs> oh, okay. She's 2,000 years old. It doesn't look a day over 800. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not a goblin. He couldn't care less. <laughs> I like that answer. Ah, now you have his attention. 
<laughs> that elf looks so pissed off. <laughs> oh! There are goblin champions and lords. Goblin heroes or kings. Platinum ranked adventurers. Damn. So there are some powerful goblins hiding out there in the woodwork somewhere. <laughs> that's a real that's a real helpful number. I love that. He doesn't even care. I don't really care how much you pay me. Just you you said where some goblins are. That's it now. I can't do anything else other than fantasize of slaughtering them. She'll make an exception for him though. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that's gonna make him real popular. Oh, she's got her staff out. Oh. <laughs> this is a discussion? Mm. Well, there you go. Do as you wish. That's exactly what I thought I was leading up to. They're going with him! <laughs> what was the point in hiring him then? <laughs> oh, they're uh, resting up. Should mean all of their uh, cooldowns will be reset by the time they go into their battles. Oh, he can become a dragon? That's interesting. To root out heresy. Where did he come from? The Warhammer universe? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, you won't get much out of him. So I could slay <laughs> No, I don't think you can figure out his reason, my dude. Fire wine? Isn't that just whiskey? <laughs> it burns your throat as it goes down. <laughs> She's drunk! What? She barely drunk anything! <laughs> that was a <laughs> she looked like she meant business with that cheese then. <laughs> oh. That's an interesting thought that if they only hunt beasts then they don't actually um <laughs> The nectar of the gods, I like it. <laughs> okay, con considering she's like the elder of the group, she's not uh, a very like mature, is she? That's interesting, so he's carrying around some very interesting magic. Yeah, I'm gonna say, we heard, we learned about this earlier. Okay. Well, it makes kind of sense. That's an interesting version of where goblins come from. That's actually a pretty interesting theory. I like that. Um, I don't know why the moon is green and one is red, though. Mm. Yeah, he holds his sister in very high regards. Everybody choose your words carefully. <laughs> oh, he has a spare helmet. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm gonna say, release the arrow. Don't worry, it'll blow back. It's a fantasy with. <laughs> oh no! Oh! <laughs> Nice! Oh, just seeing those guys come out of the shadows. That's enough to terrify a few goblins. And the music is always on point. But that's going to be the end, isn't it? So the next episode's going to be... Yeah. God damn it! The next episode's going to have all the goblins slaying. Next week's going to be a fun day. I won't be here! No! <laughs> Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Better late than never. That was Goblin Slayer Episode 3. That was a very different episode from the previous two. It was actually kind of... happy. And um, there wasn't really anything that happened that was dark. Uh, there was a little bit of blood and gore at the end. But again, it's not really dark. It's just violent. And uh, next week's episode could be very interesting. However, it has just occurred to me, I'm not going to be here. So, yeah, next week you won't be getting Goblin Slayer probably until Monday. Unless, 
And I've only just had this thought, so I can't confirm that this is the thing that could happen. Unless, because I will be with DB Geek, and I will also be with the Anime Panda, we could possibly do a joint reaction. Um, but I don't know. It depends how much time we've got, because I don't want to... There's going to be a lot that we're doing over that weekend, let's put it that way. So yeah, I don't know if we'll have the time, but I'll see. I'll see. As for this episode itself, I really enjoyed it. Um, the introduction of the new characters was great. I liked the dwarf and the lizard man. Not, I wasn't so sold on the elf at first, but I think I kind of get what they're going for with her character as the episode's gone on, so I think she could be amusing. Especially if all these guys are going to be, uh, from the looks of it, in, they're in the series now, and this is the, the party, if you will. Since they're all in the opening, I'm gathering that that's what is going to be the case. I really like the personalities and the relationships that these guys all seem to have with one another already. Uh, the Dwarf and the Elf obviously being traditionally rival stroke enemies, so the fact that they're constantly being playful with each other and teasing each other kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings. Obviously, I think it'll remind everybody of Gimli and Legolas, but, you know, I think anyone who does Dwarf and Elves uh, interacting with each other almost always now goes for that kind of relationship, because those two just did it so well in those films, and it was written so well in the books. And it's kind of, uh, it's just one of those things that you think, ah, uh, yeah, we need we need some of that in our party. <laughs> it's always good to have a bit of uh, banter between some of your characters, right? Especially if it's a D&D &D campaign in disguise, then, you know, people, people do like to uh, have those wonderful moments where they just argue about what character is better, or what skills are better, or who is this and who is that, and I love the idea that the lizard man is just kind of like the referee and he's like, yeah, all right, you you kids, whenever you're finished. I'm actually the youngest one here, but I'm also the only one here that is like mature enough to actually be an adventurer. <laughs> and I liked his comment too, like, oh, you should um you shouldn't make comments about your age. It is, you know, it it's not fair to those of us who do not live for that length of time because, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are in your race's era, it, you know, it, if you live for, I don't know, 10,000 years, for example, then the elf isn't that old. And if the dwarf only can live for like 200, 300 years, then he's sort of technically older than her. And obviously Goblin Slayer and the lizard, who we don't actually know how old the lizard man is, but you know, if they only live till like maybe 60, especially back in that sort of era, that would be impressive. Um, then they're like way further into their lifespan and much more older than they are. So I really like that idea. Like just because you have a long lifespan doesn't make you better than us. And I was like, yeah, I like that. I like the fact that they kind of uh, addressed that. Because in other fantasies, it always annoys me when they're like, we have lived for thousands of years. We know much more than you do. And it's like, yes, but you haven't actually done anything in those thousands of years. 20, 30 years as a human, they, or, you know, you've done, you have to do way more, and yet, as they said, the elf hasn't done anything other than live in the forest. She's been alive for 2,000 years, and she's never had alcohol, and she's never had cheese. It's like, what? <laughs> I also like the interactions between the cleric and goblin slayer, the way he was trying to, like, allow her some time to rest, and he wasn't sure whether or not he should bring her with her, because it's going to be a higher level... Uh, quest and but then she was like really annoyed because he didn't discuss it with her and then he was like no That's what we're doing now and then she was like well I'm coming with you and he's like well that's up to you It's your decision, but if it all goes horrifically wrong. I didn't make you come with me I think that's basically what he was saying <laughs> But considering that he's also got you know these other three with him now Which I think is I, I I like it but at the same time I'm like they went there to hire him to deal with the goblin so that they could go off and help deal with the demons, am I right? So, the fact that they've now just decided to go and help and kill all these goblins is like, wait, but why didn't you just kill them yourselves then, if that was an option? Surely that would have been easier than paying someone. But maybe there's a lot more goblins in there than we, we've seen in either of the previous two episodes, and, you know, they needed an expert, someone who is uh, specialised in killing of the goblins. I also really liked their interactions, and, you know, the fact that he didn't give any kind of care in the world, that there's a great big demon army amassing that's going to threaten the world, and that there's this big epic story unfolding outside on the planet, and he's like, I I don't care. And I, I just love his comeback when she was like, but the demons are going to destroy the world! And he's like, yes, 
And if everybody goes off to fight the demons, the goblins will destroy the villages before the demons get the chance to destroy the world. It is not an excuse not to slay goblins. <laughs> now you could call him one-minded, you could call him crazy if you want, but that is still true. You know, that is uh, one of those things that... Yes, you have to think of the bigger picture, but whilst you're thinking of the bigger picture, all the people who are only thinking about the small picture are having a whale of a time, and monsters like goblins can, you know, take advantage of the situation. So, I actually agree with Goblin Slayer on that one. You need people like him to stay back and just deal with these smaller threats that aren't going to, you know, destroy the world. But, if left unchecked, they're going to kill or ravage the land and uh, other things that is not very nice, uh, indiscriminately. So, you know, you guys go and deal with the demons, you're powerful enough. You know, just let me slay my goblins, in peace. <laughs> and uh, it's just the way that once they were like, oh no, 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 we do actually have goblins for you to slay. He was like, ah, now you're speaking my language. Rattled off all these questions, and then was like, right, where are they? Excellent. See you later. All right, pay. Um, whatever. <laughs> it's just like, I have goblins to slay. <laughs> Like, he really doesn't care about pay, like, he pretty much just took, like, a handful of coins for his rent and gave the rest to the cleric, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and as I say, I really enjoyed their interactions when they were at the campfire, uh, seeing the elf drunk, trying to get more information out of Goblin Slayer, seeing the way that, you know, he doesn't really want to... At first he was really withdrawn and didn't want to open up, and technically he still hasn't opened up, but the fact that he mentioned his sister and the fact that he did technically take part in the group, he shared his cheese when everybody else was sharing their stuff, and then he told his theory about where goblins come from, so he is taking part, and he is, he still does have the ability to be social, despite what some people have said. Maybe it's different in the books, I don't know, but to me, yeah, I know that people keep trying to convince me he's crazy, but he doesn't seem crazy to me. Is he completely 100% functional, mentally? Probably not. And I doubt very much that anyone would be if they'd seen the things that he'd seen, or lived through the experiences he'd experienced, but in my opinion, he's well adjusted and he's coping with his uh, stress and his bottled up uh, repressed emotions in a very healthy way of slaying every goblin in sight he sees. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Anyway guys, that's probably going to be it for me for this particular episode. Thanks very much for tuning in and checking it out. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this episode. And if you're hyped for next week's episode, because I know I am. Oh, I can't wait to hear the metal music kick in and see all of them just take these goblins apart. I wonder if there's going to be some bigger goblins down there like shamans or hobs or some of these other types that he's just mentioned in this episode, sort of setting up the idea that we might have to fight ridiculously powerful goblins like the equivalent to platinum adventurers. So that's higher than silver, right? So that means that if they do come across one, they are all going to have to work together, uh, you know, 100% in order to kill him. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm very excited for the, the next week's episode. If you're new around here, don't forget to click the subscribe button to get notified when the, any new episodes go live. But that's going to be it for me for today, guys. As always, I'm Psycho Gold, and I will see you in my next video. Psycho Gold, out.